Now, an estimated 12 million cycling enthusiasts stand along the roadsides of France every year to see a stage of, well, the Tour de France, waiting to catch a glimpse of the professionals as they whiz by at an average of 40 kilometres per hour. Some wait hours, for others days, and some even weeks. For many, it's become an annual pilgrimage. They are the subject of a new documentary here in France called The Holy Tour, and we're joined on set by one of the directors, Valérie Rosier. Uh, Valérie, just firstly, maybe fill in our viewers on this. There are a group of people who camp out along the Tour de France every year for days before the tour is expected. It's incredible. It's um, like um, uh, some people follow the tour, so with their camping car and uh, the camper van, and, but there are also other people with their camper van who go in the mountain weeks before uh, the stage. And we thought it would be like 10 days, so we arrived 15 days before a stage uh, in, the, in the Col d'Isoire mountain. And there we realized that there were camping cars there that were already there for 10 days. So people really come a lot in advance to, to Indeed, have... Indeed, that's like more than three weeks. Well, before we go any further, let's take a very quick look at the, an extract from the Holy Tour. <laughs> Now we're getting a, a glimpse there at the end of when that tour finally arrives, but throughout the, the documentary we see a lot of waiting. I mean, and the people, they're clearly passionate, but do they not get bored? They, no, they, they don't get bored at all. Actually, uh, they wait for weeks and um, for two minutes of uh, happiness at the end. And uh, even though they, they enjoy the moment, I think it's, uh, it's a good lesson for us, of, for life. You know, the, the two minutes at the end are not that important. What's important, it's actually the, the way they're going to fill their days and the way they're going to meet uh, their, their new neighbours. And uh, they're waiting, but the film, I think, is with humour. So it's Absolutely. not... Uh, it's Absolutely. Not... But it does seem a real community. I mean, the people that you filmed, they all seem to be French and they seem to have come every year for many years. You know, do they meet the same people every year? And could they explain to you where this passion comes from? So the, the, some of those people um, meet over there. So they meet their new neighbour coming from another part of France or another part of Europe. But uh, other people we filmed um, um, uh, met like um, a few years ago, in, also in a mountain, and they, they got along. And so they decided every year to, to meet again and to spend uh, those weeks in the mountains together. Indeed, and I guess trying to pick a perfect part of this Tour de France where they will see those professionals whiz by. The filming, I have to say, is very beautiful. It's almost like photographs a lot of the time and maybe that gives us a sense of the weight because some of the shots we get to absorb them for a few minutes. We also see some quite repetitive situations and, you know, the checking of that TV. It also came across to me that it was mostly the men that seemed to want to be there. Was that a misconception? Um, it's true and not true. It depends on the couples. Actually, we, we didn't expect that at all. But in some couples, the, the women were more keen on the Tour de France than the men. You know, the men would go and walk in the mountains for the whole afternoon. And you would see the women of, uh, of 80 or 70 watching the whole, the whole stage uh, from their camper van. So that's, uh, it's a couple thing. Uh, sometimes the men listen to the radio and the women give indication on, oh, I think they are there, uh, 25 kilometers left. So there, there's something nice happening in those couples. Indeed, and it was this weird situation where you had an absolute passion for the Tour de France. But as you say, it wasn't, in a way, it wasn't an obsession because when the, finally the Tour de France came, a lot of them didn't manage to really get to have the best place to see it or watch it, did they? No, it's, uh, it's crazy because they, they, one of the reasons they come earlier is to, to get the best place uh, to, um, to see the, the, the runners, but also to be seen by television. And, uh, and the thing is that a few days or the day of the stage, uh, some, a lot of a bunch of uh, people arrive. And, and what happens here is that uh, a lot of people go and come 
between the road and the camper van and uh, voilà, sometimes a few problems arise then. Indeed, the Parisians didn't come out looking very well in that documentary, I have to say. People from Paris were kind of getting a bad reputation in that, saying that we take over and you know, don't think about the others. Yes, but uh, <laughs> Parisians, they are, they are beautiful, but they are a bit hated too. It's, I think it's the, the uh, voilà, that's a Parisian's life. Uh, but explain to us also, the Tour de France, it does seem that it's about much more than cycling. It's about um, the the idea behind the documentary was to speak about those people. We and we really love them. We wanted the, to, the people to love them also. So we chose the people we directly loved. But the, um, uh, what was the question again? No, just be, it's so much more than just cycling. This yes, the yes. In, in I think it's, there is the idea of uh, being in a place where where they, normally they cannot be. The, normally in France you cannot put your camper van like that in the mountain, but because of the Tour de France, because it's the, like the, I think the third uh, most important uh, sport event in the world, yeah. uh, and, and it's free. That's the crazy thing about Tour de France, you don't have to pay anything and you can be so close to, to heroes. And uh, so there is something sacred and magic uh, around this, uh, this event. Do you share that passion for the Tour de France? I share it, but it took me some time actually, because um, I had to be adult to one day understand the rules and the strategy because if you don't understand them I, I can understand it's very boring to watch just people on their bikes for four hours but once you get a few strategy uh, tips um, something happened and, um, and you get uh, hypnot hypnotized by, uh, by, it, by this race. And it gets addictive. How long would you wait though to see them whiz by? Because I have waited, I complained about waiting three hours so that tells you how bad I am but they go by so fast. How long, how long would you wait? Um, in front of my television, I would, I would go and have naps. Actually, having naps in, fr in front of the Tour de France and your television are the best naps ever. Because when you watch uh, like uh, Roland Garros or Wimbledon, you never know. You can wake up after the game. But with the Tour de France, like, you know when they will arrive approximately, so you can organize your naps more, uh, more you, easily. You have time. Well, I have to say, I very much enjoyed watching the Holy Tour. Any more documentaries of this style on the, on the horizon? Uh, it's um, not, not yet um, precise, but um, it's going to come. You say, I've just done that. And how long did you spend with them over the two weeks? We spent two weeks with them and we didn't know them at all. So um, what's nice with people in the mountains like that is that uh, when you, the first day we arrived there, we knocked on every, every camper van and asked, do you want to be in a part of a documentary film? And most of them said yes, because one of the reasons they are there is also to be on television. So, so you met their year. Well, thanks so much for coming in and telling us a bit more about that documentary. Valerie Rosier, one of the directors there, of the Holy Tour.